So I'm very happy to announce our next guests. According to our next speakers, what the world needs now is a revolution in movement. How we move from A to B will change dramatically over the next few years. Predictive data will tell us, for example, how to avoid traffic jams. And already within two years from now, we will see flying taxis moving in between cities. Mark Berg, the CEO of Freenow, will be paired today with Florian Reuter, the CEO of Volocopter, who is a true DLD all-star and has been on stage with us in Singapore and Munich already. They are joined in their common dream to create a better future for mobility. They will be interviewed by our dear DLD friend and DLD super all-star, Tabitha Goldstaub. Tabitha is a serial tech entrepreneur and she is specializing in communications about the impact of artificial intelligence. She's the founder of Cognition X. Tabitha, may I hand over to you? <laughs> hi. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hi, hi. <laughs> hi. I am so thrilled to be here. I'm sad not to be in uh, Munich with you all, but I know, as we you miss said, you. <laughs> well, I miss you too. Well, I'm really happy to be here. Only problem is I can hear a bit of a um, delay and a, a lag on the, oh, it's gone now. Excellent. Thank you very much. Wonderful tech teams. Cool. <laughs> um, we're in. So today I get the honor of interviewing two world leaders from Germany. As you said, um, we're going to talk about the not too distant future where life is simpler, safer, cleaner, and uh, way cooler. So can I welcome on uh, our two amazing guests, Mark, the CEO of Free Now, and Florian, the CEO of Volocopter. Thank you. Hi, so we're going to jump straight in. Let's start with Mark. At Free Now, Will you talk about getting to A to B in the best way possible? Um, but what I want to know is what you think your winning move has been. What makes Free Now so different to its competitors and so popular with drivers and riders? Yeah, it's a very good question. First of all, thanks for having me. It's the first time here and I really enjoy it. I've been a guest many, many, many times, so I feel really privileged. Um, also sitting here um, together with, I mean, such an amazing company like Volocopter, right? And we had a couple of discussions up front and it's really amazing. Coming back to your question, um, what was the winning move? It's difficult, right? It's uh, it's it's if you, if you think about it, people don't want to didn't want to hail a taxi, right? The problem that they were trying to solve is I want to go to a restaurant, or I want to go to dinner, or I want to see my friends, right? So what they want is they want to go from A to B, right? And as soon as we realized that tra urban transportation, um, at least in our platform. Um, has many more opportunities than just ordering a cab, but also thinking about, okay, what other modes of transportation can we actually give people as an offer? Um, we realized that by expanding the modes of transportation on our platform, our business model will stay the, stay the same, right? We're just brokering supply and demand for drivers and passengers. And now we're brokering supply and demand for many other modes of transportation. We have integrated e-scooters of different parts on our platform. We've integrated car sharing to our platform. We've integrated e-bikes to our platform. We've integrated e-mopeds to our platform. And of course, we will also integrate public transportation, other form factors, right? So I think that has been one of the strongest um, differentiating moves over the last 12 mm. months that we did that really created a lot of traction for our business. Right. And uh, that differentiating move is even more intense maybe for you, Florian. Um, there are hundreds of companies that are telling us that they're going to uh, be flying all over the cities, but only really five at the front of the pack, and you're definitely uh, one of those. Tell us, what does that mean, and how, do we, how are we going to trust you? Yeah, so you know, first of all, thanks for having me. Great to be back at DLD. Um, so look, we want to make the, the dream of electric flight in our urban centers come true. You know, we've been around for more than 10 years now. And I think along the way, we've, we've created a lot of uh, you know, exciting milestones, written aviation history, and actually have, you know, had thousands of people from all over the world actually witness our public uh, test flights. So I think, you know, coming to your question, how do I trust you? First of all, we want to make you, you know, familiar with our technology. So we're extremely transparent, right? Trying to give as many people access to this technology as possible. And secondly, of course, we work extremely close with the regulator authorities all over the world. So wherever we fly, that's true in the past, but also going forward, we always do that in great, you know, cooperation, trustful, long-term relationship building with their respective regulator, adhering to the highest safety standards that you will find anywhere in aviation. 
Mm. And we're going to come back to, to the regulators in a moment. But before we do, I think let's talk about some of the tech that is new that needs to be regulated. Mark, how far away do you think we are than having autonomous vehicles? Are your fleets going to be, um, you know, when are your fleets going to be driven by AI? Um, if you've asked me two years ago, I would have said probably in two years from today, if you ask me today, in our business, what we are doing, so high dense urban areas, um, I think we're going to see flying taxis before we see autonomous driving cars in our cities. So we will integrate with helicopter before we integrate the first autonomous driving cars. I think it's different if you have fixed routes, right? I think if, if you have fixed routes for standard traffic that you always drive the same way, have dedicated lanes, it might come earlier. But full autonomous driving cars on a personal level, which really navigate through high dense traffic, I think that's that's going to be a couple of years out. But Florian, do you, do you agree with that? I absolutely do agree. I do think, and I'm I'm you know happy for Mark mentioning it in that way because I, I do think the challenges in the air are less complex than what they are on the ground, simply because we have much more space to really you know apply deconflicting, right, central deconflicting, to make sure that if everybody adheres to his flight path, there will there won't be any collisions. And secondly, um, because you know um, we, our participants in the airspace, aside from the birds, are much more cooperative, you know, much better educated than what you would find in a very complex ground environment. And therefore, uh, you know, autopilots have been around in the aviation industry for decades. So mm -hmm. you know, we believe fully automated flight will be very soon. Fully autonomous is yet another step, but we're mm -hmm. going to get there um, probably within the next five to 10 years, we will see widespread adoption of this. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because really, this is this is a partnership with the cities. Um, Mark, tell me a little bit more about how you work with the cities and when, when you decide to roll out a new city. And we'll come back to you, Florian. I want to hear a little bit more about Singapore specifically. Yeah. Um, what, what we have understand is we focus with free now on the European market, right? And the European regulated landscape is very, very fragmented. It's not mm. even regulated on a, on a country level. It's basically re regulated on a city by city level. And that means that um, each time we launch a city or each time we want to launch a new service within a given city, um, we, of course, we have very close contacts and discussions with the city to say, okay, this is what we propose to the consumers. Here's the problem that we are solving from you. We're taking more cars off the street. We are integrating with other services. So we integrate carpooling or we integrate scooters. So have less CO2 emissions. And if you explain to the cities very well what you're doing and what problems you're solving for the citizens, but also for the city, what we see is that they are very cooperative in finding solutions of getting things off to the street quickly if right. sort of nationwide regulation, European relations allow it. Right? Often we see move, cities moving even faster than countries do. I, I can imagine. And, and Florian, how are you seeing cities take to your proposals? Extremely open because they all you know, realize that with the traditional recipes, building ever more infrastructure, making ever more room for cars, you know, they're not going to solve the overall mobility challenges. So everybody's looking for new alternative uh, solutions or at least in addition to what we already have. And we believe, um, you know, air taxis, Volo cities can play an important role here. Um, there's a number of you know, routes in every city where going by air just gives you tremendous uh, advantages, whether it's topography, where you have to go you know, cross a river, go over a hill, or whether it's just plain out congestion, you can bring a lot of value by going over it um, in the air. And of course, you want this to happen in a very safe manner, clearly, that's a condizio sine qua non. But obviously, we also intend to bring a fantastic user experience, right? We want everybody to enjoy uh, having this ride. And secondly, we were always clear from the beginning, if you want to introduce a whole new mode of transportation that scales across cities all around the world, there is no way around having you know, full sustainability. And we believe an all-electric volocopter with the um, development roadmap that we see on the battery can bring us to uh, full sustainability. And that's why we're pushing so hard on that agenda. Well, that, that's exactly what I think we should talk about next. I've seen you've both made uh, pledges to address the climate crisis, and I'm excited to see both of your products helping cities with that. Let's start with Mark. What role do you think that FreeNow can play, and is there a is there a is there a data story here? Um, how are you helping not just your own impact on on the environment, but cities? Yeah, I mean, if if we say let's try to make a sustainable and really how do you call this a significant impact on reducing emissions in the city you have to reduce the kilometers traveled in let's say carbon engine or combustion engine right because that is for actually for personal transportation one of the key drivers um, and we really believe that there are two ways to get there 
Um, well, actually three ways. The first one is to actually upgrade the fleet of our drivers. We don't own the cars, the drivers are owning the cars, but we can help them um, incentivize moving to electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles quicker by saying, okay, we will get preferred allocation to those drivers who have an electric vehicle versus other drivers, right? They have a couple of seconds the tour earlier, they can accept it earlier, so we can allocate just more tours to this. The second one is we can help with our technology. We know where traffic jams are not only today, uh, right now, but also we can forecast where there will be problems in the city. So we can we can route cars much more efficiently. So also the miles travels get reduced for the same A to B transportation. And also, um, let's say the time spent in a vehicle moving will be reduced. Thirdly, I think it's going to be the how we change the mobility mix, right? I mean, if you think about urban mobility, how you consume it or I consume it, it's dependent on so many input factors. It's depending on whether I'm traveling on my own or with, a, with one person or three people, whether I'm in a rush, whether I have to go a long distance, what the weather's going to be like, right? And it could be a various of choices, like do I take an e-scooter for a three-mile trip where it's sunny? Do I take a cab because it's early morning, you have to get an airport in the rush? Do I take a car sharing because I'm with three friends and we want to go out and, I don't know, take a longer ride and a taxi is too expensive? So this is what we believe is... If, if, if we want to provide great solutions, there are two things or three things to focus on. A, reduce your CO2 emission per every trip by offering the right mode of transportation with the lowest CO2 emission for the right sort of interest of that person. And the second one is for our large core business of the right hailing that is really transforming the fleet and helping the drivers with incentives. And as I said, uh, preferred allocation to actually reduce, uh, actually upgrade the fleet faster into, a um, let's say, electric fleet. And Florian, you have one of those solu perfect solutions for the uh, for the two person, maybe pop uh, from the airport uh, or out for a date. I like to think. Um, tell us tell, tell us a little bit more about how you're seeing your role in reducing um, aviation's you know, impact on the climate. So look, clearly, I think with a, a new mode of transportation like volocopter, we don't really have much impact on the wrongdoings of the past. Right? It's more about uh, implementing a very attractive new mode of transportation, which can lead the way into the future. And that, again, as I said, you know, has to be fully sustainable. Now, I know there's different philosophies. Some people say, but it's not rational, right? We should pool parties, you know, several people into a specific, you know, bus or mass rapid transit system and then, you know, get them one way or the other. And I think the truth lies somewhere in can't we give choice um, by removing the negative externalities of you know, the individual choices that people take? Even today, in many instances, it makes complete sense to use public transport. But what we see in reality is that people, just for whatever reasons, everyone has their own personal reasons, don't always use public transport. So what do they do? They take their own personal car and sit, you know, sit there uh, stuck in traffic, although it rationally does not make sense. So we want to offer our mode of transportation without having you know, bad conscience or something because it is truly sustainable and it is accepted by the, the overall society and you will always you have a complete mobility mix, as Mark pointed out, and then you would take the volocopter air taxi on those trips where it makes perfect sense for you in that particular situation. And of course, we work very hard every day to make the volocopter your uh, option of choice as often as possible. I can see now there's, there's a DLD deal to be done between the two of you. Um, let's move on to my last question um, before my quick fire uh, final question. So my penultimate question really comes to um, thinking about inequality. At DLD All Stars, we heard yesterday, many people time and time again, were talking about how do we reduce the chasm between the, the haves and the have nots. I think it was, it was really clear that that's what's on many people's minds. And I want to come to you both um, to answer this. But Firstly, let's come back to you, Florian, um, on Volocopter. How long before it's not a luxury? Um, to me, I think I've already said to you, you know, a two-person Volocopter feels very, very exciting, um, but definitely a luxury. But, but how can we change that? I think it feels a luxury because many people naturally associate with a helicopter ride, right? And that's, I can't blame you. That's the closest thing you have towards, you know, what we're going to offer. However, I think, yes, you know, in the early beginnings, we will have very limited uh, supply in terms of landing sites and vehicles available. We will be manufacturing at you know, very small volumes, very manually. Um, but over time, similar to the Tesla approach, right? They had first the Tesla Roadster, the Model S, the Model 3. We have a clear path towards, you know, bringing our uh, services out into the road. Again, we are um, providing services, um, mobility services of professionally operated fleets. So you're going to order a volocopter ride you know, with your mobile phone, 
you're not going to own it privately. You're going to order the ride, right? It's a shared asset used by all. And we're, we're going to make it more ubiquitous over time. And I expect price points to come down over the next five to 10 years again uh, to actually, yes, the price point of today's taxi. And I think that's still something that not every one of us uses every day, true. But I think uh, large parts of our population use it in specific circumstances. And that's how we want the, you know, to position the Volocopter going forward. In specific circumstances, it makes complete sense to take the air taxi simply because it uh, you know, is the rational choice on that particular route versus other ground transportation options you might have. Right. And, and Mark, what are your plans at Free Now to reduce that chasm between those that can and can't afford to personalize their own travel? Yeah, I think it's a fair question. I think it's a very good one because we believe that um, we should provide affordable traffic to everyone. Um, and this means that we had to expand our platform from a taxi only business to a broader business because taxi is sort of a luxury product, right? In most countries and in most cities, it's highly regulated. There are very high tariffs, which makes sense because it's a premium service, right? You get a very high quality of car, you get educated drivers who are doing an excellent service to help you carry your luggage and so on, right? So that makes perfect sense. But if we think about what's our true objective, our true objective is to help people um, think about, is there an alternative maybe to a private car ownership, right? What does a private car cost me per month if I include everything like insurance, the acquisition cost of a car or the financing of a car, a garage, uh, maintenance, everything that you have. And if you put this into a sort of a mobility allowance where you can freely choose depending on, as I said, depending on your current needs, depending on weather situations to say, this is for me the best way to travel. And if we can make this significantly more affordable having that kind of flexibility and that kind of offering to a customer that 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 it makes sense for them to say i can't i can't maybe afford a car but i can afford this mobility allowance because it's a mix of public transportation of bikes of scooters and of taxi when i need one or of a car sharing when i need one i think we will generally contribute to a more fairer sort of transportation system i think yeah, I if i may quickly add to this Many people aren't even aware of how much money they actually spend on a private car. And if Mark and yeah. I you know, can actually offer seamless transportation about, across you know, many different road, uh, modes in an as convenient way as possible, I think it should absolutely be accessible to all. And then they just kind of make their individual choices given the mix that they have. But if we can get people to move away from the private car, I think we've come a long way forward to increasing quality of life in our cities. I mean, right now, and I fully agree, right now, if I think about it, what we're trying to reduce is, like, depending on customer needs, we've seen the data that people really um, try to go with carbon neutral, even today, right? So we could build packages, monthly subscription, based on here are all our carbon neutral assets that we have. And we give a special price on this one, maybe even discount because we want to enforce it, right? And we can play around with prices on our marketplace saying, if something is sort of polluting the environment, we will charge a higher price to it. Or we can package mm. someone who says, listen, I don't, I need very, very rarely to have a car and I'm mostly using public transportation. So we say, okay, if, we're, if you upload your monthly subscription, we'll give you 10 free rides on the scooter just to provide right. a service that will keep you engaged in the platform. Right, yeah, I quite like that idea. And so onto ideas, I want your last idea. So okay. I would want to leave with one message for uh, Oliver Zipsy, the chairman of BMW Group. So he's on after us. And I think that it would be a good way to hand over to him one piece of advice that you have for him and other traditional car companies who are innovating. You've got 30 oh, seconds. Sorry, you want to go first? Oh man, I need to be go careful on. on this one. I need to be careful <laughs> on this one. I would say, look, uh, you know, it's particularly with, with an iron air taxi. I think this development is so much closer than most people think even you know, in positions like Oliver is uh, with, with, within BMW. Um, on a regulatory front, you know, we're so close to getting final approvals, and this is a whole transformation that is about to set in. Everything that you hear me say about going vertical and offering air taxi rides is just the humble beginning of a much more profound transformation of people moving into the third dimension of the next decades to come. And I think most mm -hmm. people haven't even started to comprehend the profoundness of that transformation. Thank you. That will have Mark. a relevance to everyone. Yeah, it's a very fair point. I, I, I could copy it one-to-one, -one, but that would be boring because I really like what Florian was saying. For me, it's more, um, I think if I would have a very short-term wish, it would be having affordable electric vehicles ready, ready for sharing. I think that would be amazing for 
broader because if you see how many people cars are unused in the streets if we could enable them for car sharing even privately that would be a huge huge driver of really transforming urban transportation and in the long run thinking about different form factors because bmw is a great company they have so much innovation they have so much engineering skills so thinking about other modes of transportation and urban transportation that I could build that would be amazing I agree with both of you. Thank you. And Steffi, thank hey, you. Kamaza. Cool to see you. Hello. Uh, cool to see you. You have to invite these guys to Cognition X. My friends, <laughs> Cognition X is a must for conference goers. It's a must for newsletter consumers. What is Cognition thank X? Thank you. Yeah, well, I, I think you should come and interview these two at Cog X. I will. I will. If you invite me, Thank I will. You. <laughs> cool. I'm going to invite you right now. Thank you, Tabitha. Thank you, Mark. And thank you all. Thank you so much.